Holding a note. I'm going to demonstrate and then later on discuss for those of you who might be interested in such things. You may be wondering, is it of any use holding long notes? Personally, huh, for me, I just enjoy the physicality. There's something about all the muscles around here, about that, and by the grace of God, I'm strong and fit. But tomorrow's another day, and I just uh, find it cathartic. Not necessarily musical, but I don't know. If you're an opera singer, um, session singer, maybe musical theatre, you may be obliged to hold notes because that's the way it's written and they expect you to do it. Usually it wouldn't be as long as that, obviously. But nonetheless, you might be obliged. If you're jazz, pop, soul, the rest of it, then you don't hear it so often, really. Uh, some of the singers I used to listen to still do, but like uh, Vic Damone, Tony Bennett, Frank Sinatra, not so much, but a little bit. Those were out of an era where that kind of uh, technically, technically accomplished singing still existed. It's different, it's different. It's technically, technically accomplished these days, but it's different. So they would hold long notes, Victor Moan in particular. I got quite, I got, just got quite used to it. I find it quite exciting. Is it showing off? Probably. But hey, a little bit of showing off's all right. I think you don't do it all the time. Um, so there you go, maybe not for you, if you feel it is for you, let me tell you a few things that might help you along the way. Yes, it's a physical business, you can't get away from it, very physical. It's not only is it to do with all the muscles and all the rest of it, but it's to do with your lung capacity and your ability to keep doing stuff with reduced oxygen, which is why I find it such a buzz, but um, things you can do then. One thing I used to do was I just used to hiss while I was walking to work decades ago when I started doing all this stuff. The hiss would be like this then as I walked. So I'd count the steps. The hiss was very steady, very small. All these muscles around here would be controlling it. In anything I mention on this to do with uh, the breath then, Bear in mind that you don't want to be doing anything that you can't do when you sing. Don't bother doing it, if that's the case. Because if I use this, if I control the air with my tongue, so I'm just going to push the air now and let my tongue control it. And every time I move my tongue, the air comes flying out. So obviously when you're singing, your tongue's moving. So if you practice that, forget it, it's a waste of time. Because... Uh, you can't control it with your tongue when you're singing. So if you understand what I'm saying, watch out for that. There's only really two places that, any controlling round here on the hiss. The hiss is just the tongue placed there so that the already controlled air can be heard. So it's a reference for you. You could do it without the hiss. I'll put the hiss in. Up to you, I find the hiss useful because I can hear if it's unsteady or if it's starting to, the flow's starting to increase. The controlling then is done all around here, and that's what you're working on. So what you want is maximum input of air without being uncomfortable. So you can work on that. I find the abdominal breathing best for that, and it's spread round to the back. Practice that maximum in. Greatest efficiency in terms of not wasting it on the first half of it going out as soon as, because you're so full, the half of it comes out as soon as you start to release it. And the third thing, as you can imagine, is managing to squeeze all of it out without letting that squeezing transfer here. 
which yeah, can be a tendency towards the end as you squeeze like that, the squeezing starts to be like, oh, body, so your nose is going to start sounding like that, which you don't want, or you might do. Maximum in, uh, efficient use and release, maximum out. Then beyond that, with the walking thing, my experience was I could keep that steady flow for 30 paces walking to work. Did this over a period of months, gradually, weeks, months. Then it gradually got up to 40. So, oh, that's okay. Then it got to 50. I kept doing it. Got to 60. Wow. Probably for 60 paces. I started walking. There, 63, 58, 65, 60, 60 plus or minus. And I thought, that's it. I stopped doing it then. I went on to other things. Thought that's enough. Other thing you can do with this, this targets these rather more, this exercise, I found. Again, you can do it while you're walking, I did anyway. And I would breathe in over five, hold for two, exhale with a hiss so I could hear over seven or eight, hold for two, empty. Again, when you hold, make sure you don't hold with the larynx but hold with the muscles, and same at the other end, don't squeeze off there, but rather feel the muscles, I can hardly speak because I've got no air, but feel the muscles, I can feel them now, wow, right the way, right the way around, so that goes something like this, try also I'd say to judge a full in breath over, evenly over the five on the way in, and I would say try to judge a full breath evenly on the eight, on the way out. So here we go, I'm just in neutral now, I'm going to take a breath in over five, but I'm going to actually exhale a bit and take a breath in over five. Now I'm holding for two, out. I'm holding out for two. Woo! That really lets you feel these. And then extend it. What was I in over five? In over seven, out over ten, maybe. Don't do too much of this one. Well, be sensible, because it, it is quite stressful. You don't want to be too much going, you know, like that. And it's not really, you know, you don't want to be too much like that, I'd say. Something else I've noticed. I swim a fair bit, 65 lengths, which is a mile. And I used to do 50% breaststroke. 50% front crawl because it works different muscles, different parts of the body. I thought it makes sense to me. I just make my own things up. Trust this thing. Listen to it and make it up. I used to swim front crawl like this. Breathing in. After a while I thought, I'm going to get lopsided. I've been doing this for a while because I'm always twisting that side in the water and I twist that side in the water and I twist it. I thought, it makes sense surely to twist that side. Twist that side. So I started breathing every three. Yeah, that felt good. Took me a while to get it, it just felt uncomfortable because I wasn't used to twisting outside. I was taking water in and all sorts. I wasn't twisting far enough, which made me realize I got very used to twisting, or mostly my head, not the body so much. Very used to twisting that side, but this side didn't want to go so far. Anyway, it evened up. And I was breathing, twist breathing any three. Left it like that for a couple of years, I think. And I don't know, one day I thought, oh, I'm not doing so much of my breathing exercises when I'm walking and so on. I want to keep fit and well, singing wise too. So I thought, well, let me, uh, let me see do it with the swimming, because I go swimming two, three times a week. Let me extend it to five. So I extended it to five. After a few lengths, I had to go back to three. But then I go back to five. So, you know, three, five, three, five, breaststroke, I went from every time. to so every three um, and again having to go back to every time but within a short period of time a few months no problem so I thought front crawl let's go to seven so I put front crawl to seven again had to keep going back to to three or five every now and then to get some more in and then go back to seven. And if I when I got ill, I had a respiratory virus uh, three years ago. My God, did I notice. 
forget that. I was back to breathing every stroke or every other stroke. So a very good monitor for any of these uh, respiratory viruses you might have. They let you know. So I'm back now to doing seven. And then I take some breaths to top up. But now pretty much seven and do the whole half, 33 lengths or something. And with a breath stroke, I now breathe every four strokes. Come up there and take a breath and go on. And quite comfortable. Every now and then, have a little top up. And when I'm turning round, I do a little and then go again. So what's going on there? I don't know, I'm not a doctor, but something's obviously getting more efficient. Lung capacity, maybe. Efficiency, something must be going on because I can comfortably do four with a breaststroke, seven with a front crawl, not a problem. Whereas before I couldn't, I had to breathe every time and I was pretty fit then. So something's improved. So I suggest that for you as well. And as I mentioned, these respiratory viruses people are going on about, I'm thinking if this thing's fit, if this system is fit and you get something that knocks it back, even if it knocked it back to half, you're probably still gonna be all right if you're fit. If you're not fit and it gets knocked back to half, might not be so good. So I thoroughly encourage just for general health and for singing if you like fairly athletic singing, which I do, and just it feels so great. Well, all, all this stuff just to me just feels great. It's just, uh, I love it. So there we are. I hope that's been of some use to you, some encouragement to some of you, and I'll see you next time. I've got a few extra points regarding these long notes, and that's to do with where they are in your range. Traditionally, usually, they're done fairly high up in the top section of your voice and there's things you can do um i've got a video called the seven states of high low notes the very lowest i've found use so much air that they won't last very long uh, that's it if I narrow a bit here, uh, mm, not very comfortable. You can, we could work it in. I don't do it down there. We could work it in. It will last a bit longer. If you're generally breathy, which can sound great, if you use a mic, it's a nice quality, but that breathiness is inefficient air, air escaping that isn't directly causing the vibration of the larynx. It's escaping. There's a leak, if you like. So obviously you're not going to be able to hold them so long there. Now, when it comes to the top, I might do it briefly here. I've got to be careful because I'm in a flat. Uh, it is in that video. So when it comes to the top, if I'm going to go, ah! which is fully, oh, fully open, I can see, I can see the waveform. I'm going to have to um, reduce that. Uh, in post because otherwise it will make everything else much quieter but hopefully you'll be able to f hear the uh, the quality of that if I narrow that and make it uh, then it's using much less air so if you're doing it to show off <laughs> then use a the narrow one because it's going to last longer. If you want that heft, then it won't last as long, but you'll have the heft. I think that's it. Good luck. Watch out. Don't hurt yourself too much. Sometimes you have to hurt. Sometimes it hurts a little bit. If you're finding things, you get the wrong place. You're not quite sure what you're doing. Please, be sensible. Adios.